Hi. This video is sponsored by Grammarly. Thanks, guys. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Do you guys remember a time? A time where everything was simple. A time where the words mechanical keyboard only meant one of two keyboards. One being the Razer Black Widow Chroma. Probably the most famous keyboard that any 12 year old at the time would have wanted. Which was me. I, I was the 12 year old. And keyboard number B. The Corsair K70 RGB. Did that trigger some nostalgia? Yo, smash like if that triggered some nostalgia. A unique looking keyboard with floating key design. Brushed aluminum as the plate and also the case. Even including a volume knob and media control. And my most favorite feature of all, super premium quality keycaps which barely held onto the keyboard that at a mere glance of the keyboard would have sent the keycaps flying in all directions. They were so shit. <laughs> well, since we already upgraded a Razer keyboard in a previous video, I think it would be only fair if I upgraded the Corsair keyboard too. Also because it kind of clicked on this video and it said restoring my old Corsair K70 keyboard. And if I didn't do that, it would have been clickbait which is still kind of cool, smash like. So today, we will be restoring the Corsair K70 keyboard. Right after the sponsor break. This video is sponsored by Grammarly. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that helps you improve your productivity and save you time on your multiple assignments with more features and advanced features, which is way beyond just grammar and spelling correction. With back to school season coming up, if you're a college student that wants to succeed in school, Grammarly is a no-brainer. Grammarly is free to download everyone's favorite word, free. And really easy to add as a browser extension. All it takes is just one click. I personally actually have been using Grammarly for the past three months and I personally actually use it for writing emails and scripts like this video. And not a single time have I regretted pressing the add extension button. Being honest with you guys, Grammarly never paid me to say that I like Grammarly. They just paid me to promote Grammarly. But I really do like Grammarly. Grammarly is really easy to integrate to your everyday life. And it works where you work, such as Gmail, Google Docs, Microsoft, and etc. I know a lot of students use Google Docs to do their group work or even edit their own papers. So make sure you download Grammarly to ace your subjects. Grammarly actually has a cool free feature which is setting your goals for the essay you're writing. So let's say you have a different audience, it will actually adjust the words that you use for that specific audience that you're writing to, such as business or school. Also, while you're at it, if you double click your words, you can actually use Grammarly's synonym feature. What it does is it replaces your words with better fitting ones. It also has a word count feature that helps you save time by knowing if you have met the requirements for your essay. When going back to school, make sure you have the right tools and go to grammarly.com slash squashyboy to sign up for a free account and save countless of hours on your assignments. You also get 20% off premium for more advanced features if you use my link. Alright, and with that said, thanks Grammarly for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. So to start this project, we have a Corsair K70 RGB. I got it for pretty cheap at only $25. It was a really good deal until I looked under the hood. Cherry browns. Yes, these were Cherry MX browns and it sounded like this. I mean, it's, it's I right, it's an old keyboard, you know. So to first start the restoration process, I took off all the keycaps. The previous owner of the keyboard actually did a pretty good job cleaning most of the surface dirt. And for the parts which she didn't, I got myself an air can which can help spray off the rest of the dirt. Also, do you know if you turn an air spray can upside down, it will do this. <laughs> it said on the can don't do it, but rules to me are just suggestions, so... After taking off all the keycaps, we unscrewed the top housing. There were a total of 17-ish screws. I don't know why they need so many, but sure. And they were pretty hard to take out because they were all rusty and all. Taking apart the keyboard, the insides were really filthy. <laughs> So I blow dusted all of it and also washed the bottom case. The insides of this keyboard is actually a little different than your traditional keyboard. There is a daughter board that controls the media keys and a secondary daughter board which has all the rest of the cables running out from it. So I then proceeded to unplug all the cables. After which I desoldered all the switches with the Hako FR301. Oh, the glasses guy. Oh, the... After desoldering, I pulled out all the switches. It was pretty filthy, so you know. After taking off all the switches, I took off the stabilizers. The stabilizers were actually really filthy inside, and I didn't know how the dirt got in there, but damn, it is dirty. So once all of that was done, I washed the top housing on the keyboard as well as the keycaps and the stabilizers. I left them to dry overnight and after that I started to work on the stabilizers. We first clipped the excess part of the stabilizers, lube the stabilizer housing with Crytox 205 Grade Zero, and lube the wires with Permatex dye electric grease. Once I assembled the rest of them, I moved on to the switches. These are brown switches. Not that tactile and not that great, but apparently everyone's favorite switch. You know what? Fine, fine. We're gonna do something I've never wanted to do. We're going to make these cherry browns sound good. So I first opened the switches up with a new tool that I found. All it took is just one press and it's super easy to use. 
lubed the top housing and the bottom housing with Crytox 205 grade 0, and reassembled the switches. With that done, I started reassembling the keyboard. Put the stabilizers back into place, put the switches into the plate, and soldered everything back together. Now before we put this back into the case, we're actually going to be doing the tape mod. What that is, is you take painter's tape and tape the back of the board fully. And that's pretty much it. I mean, all the cool kids are doing it, so I'm guessing it works. I'm gonna link a video down below explaining all about the tape mod. Personally, I thought it was pretty dumb, but I guess it works. And with all that done, I reassembled the case, screwed in the screws, put back the keycaps, and this is how the final keyboard sounded like. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike this video if you didn't like it. Share this video to all the Corsair users. And I'll see y'all in another video. Yeah!